Hi, welcome back to the second episode of Editor Scrolls. In the first episode, we convinced ourselves why we use Emacs. And now that we are convinced enough, let us see what we can do with an Emacs. Let us continue with the game, select the second episode, and wait for it to load. So we're in the game, and the first quest is getting started. Welcome to Emacs. Let's have a look around. Emacs can be a text editor for you or everything else. So you can do a lot of things that you want to do on your computer from within Emacs without exiting it at all. And I'm serious. It's a mode based text editor. That means there's a mode for the things you do inside Emacs and there's at least one mode for it so you have options of doing it different in different ways and if at all you find something missing inside Emacs like you want to do something and there's no mode defined for it you can create one by yourself and contribute it for the others to use so they don't have to go through the pain that you went through while implementing it it's like giving back to the community that ends the first quest Let's run a command terminal inside Emacs. I'm serious, you can do it. And there are a lot of ways to run a command terminal within Emacs. The first one that I want to show you is the inferior shell. So go to Emacs, do a meta X, and do a shell. So there's a shell inside Emacs where probably every other command that you want to run within Linux works certain things like the clear command does not work because it's not a complete shell it's inferior and uh, yeah that's that's one way of running a shell within Emacs there's the other way which is called an Emacs shell which is the Emacs implementation of shell written in ELS which is in certain ways diff uh, different and better than the inferior shell so if you want to run it in your emacs you have to do a meta x e shell and it starts so it says welcome to, uh, welcome to emacs shell and again there's the commands that you want to run they work here the clear does not work to prove that it is not a complete shell though it's not the complete uh, real proof of it but uh, again it is similar to the inferior shell a little better in certain ways but it's, it's still not a complete terminal you can close it and it's done okay and there's the other way of running a real terminal within emacs only for linux users if you use windows i'm sorry but if you're on linux you can easily run a real terminal which is like meta x term so let me show you that. Do a meta x to a term and it asks you for the shell program. It's bash and it's there. So again, the commands, it looks like the real terminal. If I clear, it works. So it's, it's a real terminal. And, and for me, I've tried running git. All the different commands of git, it, it works perfectly, whereas uh, those commands simply used to work for me in the e shell sometimes sometimes on windows sometimes on linux i don't really remember what the problem was or what the os the problem was with but yeah here you can work with everything okay so closed that completes the first quest let us run a file browser with an emacs and as you would expect there are multiple modes for file management there is one that comes by default which is called the dyad mode and to run it is as simple as doing a meta x and dyad asks you for the starting directory so this is my home directory you can search for something navigate to the folder you can come back you can rename directories of files you can move them so i do a shift r uh, let me rename my gaming directory. I rename it to games. I want to do it again. I can do it back to gaming. 
and that's that. So this is the default uh, file manager for me inside Emacs. And you can download a lot of other or probably better file browsers from the community. They've done some work for you, you can appreciate them. They can make your life easier. Which ends the quest file browser. Then you can use Emacs as a text editor. And I'm not joking because Emacs is a 40 year old text editor. It started in 1976. People were crazy at that time to make it and people are crazy today to use it. So it's a text editor, people use it for all kinds of other things too. And there are a lot of modes in Emacs for different types of files when you edit them. For example, if you're a developer, you would have been working with CSS sometime and there's a CSS mode for it. For HTML files, there's an HTML mode and someone created a web mode which is a lot better at least for me. So if I were to show you the CSS mode, I can start, I mean edit a CSS file, it, it, it goes into the CSS mode by default, it has syntax highlighting for CSS, I can do things inside CSS like commenting a few style rules, moving things here and there and sort of other sort of stuff. I can go back, I can show you uh, an HTML file. So, as you can see, this is the web mode, which is default in my case. I don't use the HTML mode since I uh, discovered the web mode. It's a lot better. You can comment sections, you can work with JavaScript, inline JavaScript, inline CSS, and markup at the same time without any trouble with proper indentation and a lot of stuff. So, you can explore it by yourself. And there are always more than one modes to work with an, uh, one type of file like the HTML you can web, uh, work with the HTML mode or web mode as per your preference. For JavaScript there is a JavaScript mode, the JS2 mode, the JS3 mode and there is the web mode again. So that is up to you. And if there is a new file type that you may come up with sometime or find somewhere you can create a mode for it, it's, it's relatively very easy, it's a plain e-list, simple uh, syntax, it's too easy to create one. So that's the end of the quest, text editor. Emacs has a calculator inside, it's a mini calculator, though it's not so easy to use at start, it, it, it follows the reverse polish not uh, notation, as they call it, I think they call it that. But you can spawn it anywhere you want to and then just use it and let it go. So if I do a meta X and yeah, look, it comes up, it gives me a prompt, I can say, so tell me what's 1 plus 2. So I write 1, 2 and then press a plus, it says 3. So 1 plus 2 is 3. This is correct. And when I'm done, I can press Q to let it go. With this, you might find a need to create a better calculator. I'm not sure if there are better calculators available, but I would want to create, or rather, love to create one for myself and for the others, for the love of Emacs. And that ends the current quest. You can play games with an Emacs. And there's a huge list of, uh, I mean, pretty long list of games that they provide with the default distribution of Emacs. Just run it and play inside the games inside the Emacs. There are like Snake, Pong, Tetris and a lot of um, text based RPGs. There's a version of uh, port of 2048. So if I were to run Snake inside Emacs, I would do a meta X. and Snake. And there's a Snake running. I might not be too good with Snake. But yeah, you can play it inside and that's game over. I made a high score. So need I say you can get a lot of them from the community? I think you might be expecting. There's a lot of games available for you to download. Ending the current quest of games. Then Emacs is for everything. So everything else that you want to do inside Emacs, there's Emacs. And it's not so hard to find out what Emacs can do. 
there's a lot of people out there waiting for someone to listen to about what Emacs can do. So they can bore you as much as you want to get bored. There's a lot of videos, articles, blogs about Emacs demonstrating the power of a basic text editor that is currently 40 year old. Just look up over it uh, on the internet and you'll be amazed to see. So with this, you just leveled up. You are now level 2, completing the episode 2. You learned a lot of things about Emacs, of what you can do inside it and this is not all. I am uh, sure there's a lot of amazing things you can do inside Emacs. You can call it the tip of the iceberg. So that's it for this episode. Remember to like the video, it uh, feels good. Uh, post your comments, suggestions, appreciations. Uh, and if you've not done it yet, you can subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.